Good morning, everyone. All right. Good morning. Good day. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Wherever you are. Um, in the world. Um, for some reason, I can't hear anything. Uh, we can hear you. All right. All right. Oh, wait, so, see. Uh, today, I actually, um, there are two things that are going on today, um, and I have a hard stop at one o'clock. So um, we want you all to um, to go ahead and prepare your questions. Go ahead and prepare your questions. Uh, I'm just saying this. Go ahead and prepare your questions uh, for me so I can answer all of your questions. Um, and then I'll, I'll go into... Um, Mm, I'll do questions first or last. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do questions. Uh, I'm gonna do questions last. I'll do questions last. I want to make sure that I give you all um this. All right. Actually, no. I have to take this medicine. So I'll do questions first. Um, and then we'll. We'll go into the lesson. All right. Anybody have any questions or uh, progress that you wanted to share uh, from this week? Oh, okay. No questions. All right. Let's go. So today I have a, um, I have a site visit. Um, so the site visit is for a um, a renovation grant that we're doing. So this renovation grant is to renovate the building that the city gave us for a dollar. So I'm inside of the building right now. I'll do a, um. I want to tell you all about the um the project itself, and then I want to go through uh what what this is, um, and just in case you. Are, are doing it in your area, you'll know how to navigate it, all right? This grant comes from the Tourism Development Authority. So in every city around the, around the country, there are hotels, right? Y'all cities have hotels in them, right? So those hotels, you know, the hotel might, might be $100 a night or $200 a night, but the bill ends up being like $250, it's not just the regular tax. It's like all the other fees. And they can add up to be a lot. You get what I'm saying? Anybody ever experienced that? Y'all y'all have seen these hotel bills and it's like so much higher than the room rate? That's yes. because in addition to the normal sales tax, the hotel actually, the hotel, part of the, the hotel is actually used to generate money in that local economy. So part of the hotel bill is an extra tax and that tax goes back into the local community. It goes back into the local community through an agency called the Tourism Development Authority. So I want all of you to take a look online. If you have to open another screen, I want you to locate and identify your Tourism Development Authority. Tourism Development Authority. We um we will be putting all of the Zooms. Now, in the past, all of the Zoom me meetings have been inside of the portal, uh, but we're going to be putting them inside of the uh, Grant Junkies online community. That's where everything is going to be. All right. So has everybody located your Tourism Development Authority? Yes. Tourism Development Authority. Okay, so every region has a different name. Uh, that Tourism Development Authority is a type of nonprofit. For some of those organizations, they are quasi-governmental. Uh, for some of them, they are normal 501c3. Uh, but for all of them, they have a relationship with the state legislature and they have a relationship with your county, all right? They have a budget that is approved every year and that budget is public information. You can actually take a look at their budget. Inside of their budget, they have money for their operations, et cetera. They also have budget for marketing. Part of the budget of our Tourism Development Authority is for grants, all right? So if you were looking at your Tourism Development Authority page right now, uh, you, could, uh, you could go and look at grants. 
I want you to take a look and see if your tourism development authority has any grants. For some cities and counties, they have for-profit grants. Some, they have nonprofit grants. Um, in Henderson County, um, in North Carolina, Henderson County, North Carolina, they give for-profit grants for companies um, to do more things to attract tourists. Because when tourists come to the city, they end up spending more money with the city. The city. All right. So that's your tourism development authority. Once you locate tourism development authority grants, let me know once you've done that. All right. Now, when you found yours, I want you to type it in the in the chat. You can post a link or say I found mine or the name of it, but let me know that you got it. All right, I see. There you go. There you go. All right. So you see the TDA. Good, good, good. So the stuff that I'm telling you all is not theory. It's actually real life stuff. All right. And and when you have, and I'll just say this as, as an aside, because last night I taught a class and uh and we brought in some new people, and I did like this stupid crazy discount on, on Grant Suite. And I was thinking about it, like I limited it to 10 people, and we only had three slots available. Um three three of the slots were were not filled. And I was like, well, that's 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 fine. It was late and and everything. But then I was like, man, you know, was it is it the price? Is it the uh what was it that that stopped people from taking advantage of? It? And it was really uh just me not communicating the value of it. Whenever you make a person, whatever you do with your time and with your money, what you are actually purchasing is an outcome. Um, and so don't spend money on anything that's not going to produce for you an outcome that's going to make life easier for you. When you come into this environment, this class, this room, et cetera, come with all of your questions, all of your problems so that you can get a better outcome. There are some people, and even um, in scripture, it says that some we get 30 fold, some 60 fold, some 100 fold. And it really has nothing to do with the information that's put out. It has everything to do with what you do with the information. All right. Uh, you can just line them up because it's too loud while I'm talking. Just make the chairs available so they can get it when they get here. But some people are going to come in and just ask one question. Some people are going to come in and ask two or three questions. Some people are going to come in and get, get everything they want. And so... Like you have to decide how much you want to get out of it. All right. The, the amount that you get out of it is going to be directly connected to what you do with what you have. So here we're talking about the tourism development authorities and the grants that are available there. You can look at it. Hello. Hello, sir. I think you're mute. It it muted me. We can hear you now. Oh, the devil is a lie. You can decide that you're going to get uh, everything that you can in order to produce a better outcome. For some people, they're doing this so that they can sell grant writing services to their clients. But for other people, you've already been doing this stuff out of your pocket and you realize that you don't have to do it out of your pocket and you want that better outcome. Either way, it translates to more money and that's directly, directly connected to the information that you receive. So we're looking at tourism development authorities and how to get money from the tourism development authority for your nonprofit or your for-profit business, depending on which one they are interested in funding. All right. Yeah. All right. So the outcome that we're producing today is more money from the tourism development authorities. All right. So I want you to locate your tourism development authority. I want you to identify the grants that are available from your TDA. All right. The next thing I want you to do on that grants page, I want you to go down to the bottom and see if there's an email or a grants manager there.
is anybody having trouble finding your tourism development authority page? Good morning, Dr. Hackett. Good morning. Um, yes, I am having slight challenges. However, I typed in um, the Tourism Development Agency for Houston, and what came up for me was the economic development um, for Houston that has all of their grants on it. Uh huh. That's good. Let me see. All right. Okay. Anybody you, else having trouble? Uh huh. No problem. Um. Hey, Coach. I was having a little issue too, and I think it's probably just a Texas thing. Um. Because I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and I'm like, um, I thought I found it, but it wasn't it. That wasn't it. Okay. I'll find it for you. Here it is. You contact him and just ask. They can connect you with the Tourism Development Authority. Now, let me see if I can find their grant portal. It's crazy, though, how it's, like, not readily accessible. Like, a lot of people <laughs> come to the Dallas-Fort Worth area all the time, so I'm like, that should be, like, right there. Yeah. It, it it should be, but this is an example of things being hidden in plain sight because it is public information, but it's not easy to get to. And for some people, if you had not been in this class, you might not have ever known that this stuff existed or how to get there. Do y'all notice anything about the um the <laughs> racial makeup of these teams? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. They don't There's look a, like us. They sure Always. Don't That's in all of them. <laughs> y'all see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what happens is they have meetings and they say the meetings are public. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you how public their meetings are. All their information is public. This is their annual report. These are the recordings of their meetings. And so it's there, but nobody knows it's there. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. We don't know it's there. All that money too, boy, I tell you. Oh, y'all see that? Wow. I'm just asking the Lord for favor. Don't let me run into a gatekeeper, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so coach, uh, this is Dr. Sherman. How's everybody doing today? Mm -hmm. um, my, my question is, cause I'm in the DFW area as well, but I'm in Arlington. So would I just search for Arlington, or I'm I'm still looking for the Dallas tourism. Um, look at Arlington. Um, and if you don't see one in Arlington, you can contact the people in Dallas and ask about it. But let's look. Oh, bless you. And coach, when you finish that, can you do for city of South Fulton, Georgia? Uh-huh, sure. And New and York New City. York. State, rather. Okay, actually, let me um let me also give y'all this tip. Whatever the tourism um development authority is, it is a nonprofit. It won't be a dot gov, it'll be a dot org. And um I'm, let me tell you this real quick. All right, can y'all see me? Can y'all see me? Yes. Yes. So um the the system is not set up for people that were down under to come up over. The system is not set up for that. It's set up 
that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. OK, so what we are doing is actually uncovering stuff that's already there. But uh, like I said, it's hidden in plain sight. When you go in, you want to be prepared. Because they're going to be surprised that you got there. You get what I'm saying? They're going to be surprised to hear from you. They're going to be surprised. Oh, how did you get here? How did you know about it? They're not going to say that, but they might say it in covert ways. Oh, how did you hear about us? Oh, who referred you? You get what I'm saying? And when you do that, you have to be able to stand flat foot and know that you are there on purpose, for purpose, with purpose. You're driven to do this thing. You're called to do this thing. You're not just going willy nilly. All right. Now. This entity is a nonprofit organization. It ends in .org. The website will end in .org. They are not a government entity, which ends in .gov. However, they work hand in hand with the, um, with the government. So they receive money, which are government funds, in order to do things for the government of that city. All right. They receive money from the government in order to do things for the government of that city. So in that sense, they're technically an agent of that government. And, but the problem is that they sit in this weird place where, because they are not government, they are not subject to the freedom of information act. Like, they don't have to turn over all of their information to you. They only have to abide by the nonprofit rules. A government is subject to the Freedom of Information Act. You can actually send an email to your city council, to your, your city, and say, I want to see all of the emails from Bob Smith, my city council person. And because of the Freedom of Information Act, they are required to give you all of those emails. You can ask to see everything that the mayor has spent money on with his or her her company credit card. And because of the Freedom of Information Act, they have to give it to you. So cities have high degrees of transparency. The tourism development authorities are not as clear cut. They sit in this uh, for that. I'm, I'm not saying that they're shady people. That's not what I'm saying. But they sit in this shady region where they work with the government, but they're not government. All right. Do, do y'all understand what I'm saying? Do anybody have any questions about what I've said? So we're going into territory that people never expected you to be in. You see their board has no representation from the black communities. And oftentimes, even when they do have representation, from the black community is only select people from those communities. When you go in, you're going into a whole new world. So you just want to be ready for it. Okay. All right. So let's go, um, let's go back to share my screen. These are the Arlington people. Your goal is always to contact them. Um, you want to know who the staff is. Um, now, when you contact them, you should not contact them first about grants. Contact them first about an event that you have coming up. Um, contact them if you want to offer your for-profit services to them. And so you want to learn how to become a vendor with them. All right. Do not contact them first about grants. And if you are doing an event, you want to make them your partner. They can, pay, our, our Tourism Development Authority, they told me that if I was inviting a person to come in from out of town for an event, that they can pay for that person's travel and their uh, performance fee. So if we brought Gladys Knight in, if we brought Patty LaBelle, or I actually, I tried to invite Fantasia for an event. Um, but she was working on the color purple at the time and couldn't come. Um, they would have paid for that person to come. Not only do they pay for that stuff, 
but they also give you discounts with hotels, et cetera. So if you're planning an event, you want to make sure the Tourism Development Authority knows about it. If you are part of a church group and that church group has an activity coming, that's still bringing in money. There's a group that I work with. Um, their organization has uh, has a convention or a conference each summer. And back when the conference first started, they were at the um, they were at the the conference center, and there was only one or two hotels. Now there are like five or six hotels and a whole bunch of restaurants. I know that the only reason that those hotels and restaurants are there is because this conference drove up the economy. This conference brought people in that brought money with them. So some people don't acknowledge that that church conference is bringing in people that are not only giving money to that church thing, but they're spending money on hotels. They're spending money on restaurants. They're spending money on taxis and Ubers and Lyfts. They're spending money at the malls. That event is an economic driver. Not only that, your fraternities and, soror and sororities, when they come into town, that is an economic driver. All right. Now, when they had these deals, these deals and discounts and things, these are made up from small businesses that offer stuff. And so my coffee shop offers things and the Tourism Development Authority buys it. So your customers should not only be people that walk in your door, your customer can also be the Tourism Development Authority. All right. Um, give me an, uh, anybody else had trouble finding your city um, before I have other questions. All right, Chicago. Let's see. Here it is. Choose Chicago. All right, uh, Diana, you had a question? Oh, oh you there. Are, uh, yeah, we couldn't unmute. All right. But um, yes, my question, I, I put it in the chat. I found out when I looked for it, it was Camden County, North Carolina. I was looking for Camden County, New Jersey. And then I went back and I put it in Camden County, New Jersey. And interesting enough, the person in charge of it is a person that I have worked with in the past on several of those types of committees. Isn't it interesting? Mm -hmm. And um, I, it was the other one, which is explained exactly the way you said, was the homeless trust funds. So if anybody's dealing with housing, that's another one in your community. Some of them have the homeless trust fund and you could apply to them with an application and this group would approve or disapprove of it. But again, I was asked to serve on this because I brought diversity and I lived in the community. When I started sharing information, it was convenient that my term had expired. <laughs> wow. See, this stuff, I mean, some people didn't even know that this stuff existed in their city um, and that this was available to them. Uh, Tanya, these are the people you need to contact um, in Chicago. All right. I wasn't sure I pulled them up, but it's when you said they're a dot org and not a dot com, I, oh. that's when I start getting confused. Okay. All right. This one is a dot um a dot com. They will they will not be a dot gov. Okay. It, it will not be a dot gov. The dot gov will always be government. All right, but these are these are the people, cultural tourism. So if you're doing something that, that's unique to your neighborhood, your city, your area, your block, um, especially if it includes uh, cultural minorities, Black people, Latinx people, uh, uh, Eastern European, Asian folks, et cetera, um, that's, that's cultural tourism. And, uh, and there's money set aside to market the stuff that you're doing. And if you are a person of color, you definitely want to get in touch with whoever is over the equity, diversity, and inclusion team. Let that person be your advocate. We know that there is a lack of representation. Figure out how to make it work in your favor. The marketing team, the marketing team are the people that go out and they advertise in other areas and their goal is to bring people here. 
Now, I had a conversation with somebody about our marketing team. Now, y'all know how diverse Chicago is, right? Chicago is actually one of the most diverse cities in the country, isn't it? But what do you notice about all these people that are marketing? It is not diverse at all. No, it's not. So what ends up happening, and and excuse uh, for those that that you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm gonna stop giving these uh, caveats because uh, by now, if you don't know me by now, you will. Know. I really don't mean any harm, but I do mean <laughs> what I say. I mean what I say. I just don't mean any harm by it. All right. These people are not going to go out and recruit folks and tell them about stuff that's happening in your neighborhood, even though they should. Where they're going to do, they're going to go to other cities and recruit folks to come and do their wedding in Chicago. That's that they're going to go and tell people to come and try the Chicago deep dish pizza. And when I got to Chicago and I don't like the deep dish pizza, I found out that the people that's there don't even care about the deep dish pizza. And we don't. But these folks, they they talking about the deep dish pizza. And when I was in Chicago, I actually got lost trying to walk from one place, from one place to another place. The little GPS took me underneath the city. And I thought I, I was about to die down there. So I was like, oh, Jesus. This is crazy. And then local people, by the time I talked to time, they laughed at me and everything because um, it was supposed to just be five minutes away. But I got lost underneath the city. Me and Bruce. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole story for another time. Y'all know Bruce is just silly. Um, but anyway. We got lost under the city. So all they were talking, all these people recruit for is stuff that's going on downtown. But I believe from talking to local people, downtown Chicago is really not all of Chicago. So what you want to do is offer them your products and services. But also, once you connect with them, then you can find out what type of grants that they have. And here we go. Choose Chicago awarded $5.5 million. What were they awarded? To expand. What is this, Tanya? Read that. Read it, I say. What did it say out loud, Tanya? Y'all don't see this? Oh, she can't. Y'all can't uh, unmute again. Yes, we can unmute. Oh, well, she does having a disobedient moment. Choose <laughs> Chicago was awarded $5.5 million to expand what I'm type sorry, of coach. Program. I was uh I had to go take care of something. You call me. I am so sorry. Oh, it's fine. I know you're at work. Um, Choose Chicago was awarded how much money to do what? To expand neighborhood tourism. Marketing. Marketing. Yep. To get people to come visit neighborhoods. So I can reach out to them for my Christmas in July event. That's exact. Not only can, that's exactly what you should do. Okay. And here are the contact people right here. Well, oh, that's the media contact. Um, that, that diversity, equity, inclusion person. Is um uh, is one of the um one of the keys for you. Okay. And these are the things that they received the money to do. Listening sessions. So you need to tell them that they need to have a listening session in your neighborhood in Inglewood. Neighborhood content creators, somebody from Inglewood, Chicago Neighborhood Cleanup Initiative. Come clean up Inglewood. Professional food and small business photography. Come and get pictures of these um, food trucks in Inglewood. Chicago neighborhood wayfinding. Digital ads. City of stories. Get uh, for your Christmas in July. Get local people, especially elders, to tell stories 
about Inglewood. And you have grant money available to pay them. These are just some of the things that you can do. All right. Alice Marie had a question. Yes, sir. No, I just um, wanted assistance with, I'm not sure if I should look under city of South Fulton or if it actually should be Atlanta. Uh, let's check. This See, it says is... that our city hall is temporarily closed. Mm -hmm. Contact this person, Catherine Early, at this phone number. She is the tourism manager. And this is where the Visitors Bureau meets. They have five board members. Yeah, this one looks like it's set up a little different. But uh, contact this person. Uh, let me copy this. No, I screen. I got a screenshot of it. Thank you. All right. With the number. And when you when you talk to her, of course, you're asking both about for profit. Um, and then later on, you want to find out about their grants. All right. Uh, who yes, else? Sir, thank you, Coach. Could you do New York State? Uh, it has to be uh, a or city. A city. County. Orange County. Uh, in New York. I'm in mean, Orange County, New York. I don't know if they do the county, the city. Is that Orange County? Orange County, New York. Um, a lot of times people look at things as consumers. When I when I look, I'm not looking at it as a consumer. I I really want to get to a person. So there's the, the contact page. Let me see if I can find you a person. In New York, uh, Diane, you had a question. I actually put it in the um, chat. My question was that we have our event that's planned for May. Now, we because of you know the limited funding, we would not be able to allow everyone to participate freely. I was thinking, would it be more advantageous for us to postpone the event to a later date? reach out to the TDA and wait to hear back from some of our other potential funders so that more people might have access. Um, I, 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 I actually don't like to postpone events. Even if you do it small at first, that's good. You know, be faithful of a few things and then rule over many. You have to start where you are. You also want to, even if it's a small event, you can include them right now. Okay. Um, and the people that they have visiting can come and participate. All right. Okay. Um, but whenever you do an event, make sure that you have a good photographer. And by good photographer, that does not mean that you have to go and spend thousands of thousands of dollars on a good on a professional photographer. You just need to have somebody there taking pictures of the event. Um, my favorite, my favorite, favorite, favorite picture. And I only have like three approved pictures. Um my favorite picture that I like to use online was actually taken with a cell phone. It is better than any other picture I've had in any photo shoot with any photographer, any videographer. It was taken with somebody else's cell phone that came into the coffee shop when it was being renovated. It's the one when I have on the vest with the pink tie. They came in, they said, oh, well, that looks nice. Can I take a picture of you? I said, sure. And so I sat in the coffee shop in a certain corner that was clean because they were still doing the renovations and they took that picture and it came from wow. a cell. Phone. So get pictures of your event, get testimonies of your event, use what you have, but don't, don't be, um, don't be nervous about inviting them or asking them to help advertise for you, build that relationship. And what you'll see is that something is better than nothing. Thank you. All right. All right. There was another question. Oh, and who was it in New York that needed to know your people? These are your people right here. 
Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right. So, oh, oh Lord. All right. So, um, our Tourism Development Board gives away grants each year. Um, I hope all of you will be coming for Grind Fest. It is May 24th, 25th, 26th. We'll have Harlem Nights Casino Night, Carnival Rides, food trucks, performances, concerts. It's going to be a whole weekend full of fun. Not one dollar comes out of my pocket. All of it comes from grants and sponsorships. And one of those grants is a tourism grant out of the category of cultural events. So if you have a block party or if you have what well, time's having Christmas in July or if you have um, seniors night out or whatever it is that you're having, if you make it something that could benefit visitors who's coming into town that want to do something unique. And don't think of visitors as just strangers. What if all of us came into town? We would be staying in hotels or Airbnbs, spending money. We are visitors. So you have to think about what you're doing as a revenue generator. It is helping the economy. And so it qualifies um, for grants that are a community benefit, okay? We receive a grant from them. They also advertise for us. So when you're looking at your tourism development board, they they might not give you a whole bunch of cold hard cash. I mean, $5,000 is relatively small, but what they can do for you is elevate your event and present it to more people. When we did Grindfest last year, um, our research showed that 70% of the people came into town because of us but 30% of the visitors came because of our, um, our Tourism Development Authority. 30% of all of the people who came, and we had about 10,000 people, 30% of them came because of Tourism Development Authority. Don't spend your money marketing by yourself when you can leverage their money and their people to help do the marketing for you. This should actually change the entire way that you do business, both in your for-profit or your non-profit. Maybe you're like um, Dr. Sherman and you have a mental health practice. What if you had a mental um, a health and wellness day that was set up not only for locals, but also for visitors? What if you were like Elena, Elena Smith uh, with Grandparent Assist in Charlotte and, and you had something uh, for Grandparents Night Out and so it was just a real fun time for grandparents that was not only for locals, but was also set up for visitors. Do y'all see how this is going? What if you are a church group and you, you were doing your thing and it wasn't only that you were doing stuff for your church, but people were coming into town. Do y'all know that when uh, T.D. Jakes did, um, when he did the Woman Thou Art Loosed um, um, event, cities were asking him to come bring it to their city if he brought it to their city he would they would let him use the civic center for free why would they let them use the civic center for free what would they get out of it the people were going to be, be in hotels they were going to eat in the city they were going right. to be in the city period so yeah, yeah that's right the economy yeah they would fly yeah. into that city they would eat at that city hotels at that city it helps mm -hmm. the economy yeah, in Asheville, North economy. Carolina. Mm -hmm. Tourism is a $3 billion industry. And what they explained to me was that $3 billion is about 30% of what other cities do. $3 billion is actually small. If all of those billions of dollars are moving through your economy, the question is, what can you do to participate? Would you be willing to send them an email and to reach out, would you be willing to invite them to a meeting? It doesn't cost you any money. But some people are so nervous and imposter syndrome has so set in that they don't even ask. So when you come into this, this environment, when you come into this class, grant writing in and of itself 
yeah, I, I can teach you how to write. But grant writing is about so much more than just writing. Relationships will actually do for you what writing will never do. But my job is to show you where these relationships are. Is there anybody here that's that's going to commit that you're going to reach out to somebody from your tourism development authority? I definitely am. This is Alice Marie. Me too. I am. Yeah. All you got to do is reach out. I will. Karen Myers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just just reach out. Just reach out. When, I'm sure going to reach out. I'm here in Los Angeles, so that's tourism is all we yeah. do. Out. Just just reach out. All right. So my tourism development authority is coming into town. Um, they've already given us the five thousand dollar grant for. Um, for what did they give us that for? Oh, for the event, the festival. Um, this grant we're asking them for eighty five thousand dollars for for the building. Um, the total project is one hundred and sixty thousand, and um, we want to install a new HVAC system and like the porch. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna switch devices, so I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna switch devices and go to my phone. Anybody have any other questions before I switch devices? All right, I'm gonna walk y'all around. So, Coach, really quick. Yes. Uh huh. We send that. Uh, when I send that email to the DEI uh person for them, how how should I? Worded like how should I? Um, when you send that email, you say, Hi, I'm Tanya. Always, always reference that you live in the city or how long you've been there. Um, and for that person, you can you can tell them, I saw that you all received um that you all receive a grant to increase neighborhood tourism. Uh, can I talk to you about what that means for my neighborhood? Okay. You want to find a reason to invite them to a meeting. Do not invite them to a one hour meeting. Always put like a time limit on it, say, you know, five or 10 minutes. Um, if there's a newspaper article or something, you can uh, reference that. But, uh, but you have to know that the people are busy, but it is their job to, to, to assist. Okay. And this doesn't have to be an in-person meeting. This could be over Zoom. On it. You want it to be zoned. You prefer it to be zoned. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Oh, Lord. How do I? Recording in progress. 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 All right. Can y'all see? Yes. We okay. Can see you. All right. I'm going I'm to turn it around because y'all don't need to see me. All right. So this is the building. And uh, I don't have the key. It's raining. It's raining outside. And so the building does not have like a porch. So we're asking for money to get an uh, awning. So to have a wraparound porch, okay? And y'all see these fans? These fans are designed to, to keep it cool, but that's not enough. So we want an HVAC system installed up there. And uh, when it's really bright outside, the sun comes in a lot and it makes it like, it, like the glare is too much. So we actually got tint on the back window, but I want curtains to black it out so that when it's too bright in here, we can um when it's you know too much, we can we can take care of that. And so that um the porch wraps all the way around. And then in the back you got restrooms and everything. But 
this stage, this stage of the of the process is um, this is actually the the third stage. So the first thing we did was submit a proposal, and the proposal that we submitted was uh, um, a letter of interest. And with the letter of interest, you give them a general overview. Now, sometimes your letter of interest is sometimes your letter of interest is going to be a letter that you write them in a very specific way. Uh, sometimes the letter of interest is actually a, a application where they give you certain um, certain questions that you have to answer uh, first. And the letter of interest is saying, this is what I want to do. Um, am I allowed to apply? I'm seeking approval to apply. And then they'll say yes or they'll say no. If you've done the letter of interest the right way, then they'll say yes. When you are writing a letter of interest, you want to go to their funding priorities and break your letter down to speaking exactly to what they fund. If they say they want to increase the number of nights that visitors come to the city in your letter of, inter of interest or letter of inquiry, you want to say, we want to increase the number of visitor um a visitor and uh, nights that visitors come. If they say we want to increase diversity of people who come to our city, then you should say we want to increase the diversity of people who come to our city. If uh, you were in Chicago and they say we we want to increase neighborhood tourism, then in your letter of inquiry, you want to say we want to increase uh, neighborhood tourism. All right. Whatever their given priorities are, make your letter short, sweet and to the point saying that your project will do that thing. All right. After we did our letter of inquiry, then they invited us to do a pre uh, submit the full grant. The full grant was uh, just answering their questions in more detail. After we did that, then um, the next stage was a presentation. In the presentation, we gave pictures. Whenever you do a presentation, you want to give actual local pictures. It doesn't matter if it, it actually doesn't matter if they're professionally done. It matters that they are authentically local. And this is when you're dealing with the Tourism Development Authority because they want people to come in and see their city in a positive way. All right. So cell phone pictures, grainy pictures, photos, any of that stuff. You want you want them to you want to show those pictures. Lots of smiling faces, lots of bright, um, vibrant colors. All right. What you're trying to do is to evoke an emotion and to make sure that people can feel what you're talking about. This is not the time to try to sound super brilliant uh, or sound like, you know, a PhD doctor um, who writes dictionaries. This is not that time. This is the time to be relatable, to be local, to be memorable, and make sure that people can feel where you're coming from, all right? And, uh, and that you have pictures uh, to back up what you say, all right? The next stage is where we are right now, where they're doing a site visit. This site visit is where they want to come to the building. And when they come to the building, I'm going to explain to them what we're going to do in the building. Now, the building is only like 1,500 square feet, so it's not going to take a long time. It's not going to take a long time uh, to, to walk around and, and get it done. But I'm going to, to help them feel what it is to... Uh, you know what? I just noticed something is missing. <laughs> That's a shame. This is so unprofessional, y'all. I really am a professional person, but something. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all. I bought a refrigerator and it wasn't. It wasn't installed, and so I was about to get mad at somebody, probably Bruce or Anthony. Anyway, I don't know, but. <laughs> it's all right. I'm laughing so hard, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where's that refrigerator? Um, because I'm gonna like, give them some bottled water. All right. So anyway, that's that. Uh, this is the site visit. After we do the site visit, then um, they make their decision and they give us the money. All right. Anybody have any questions?
No, it looks very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all. Karen, I have a quick yeah. question, please. Uh -huh. So if I was looking for a building, um, just like you, that building for a dollar, um, and I think someone else got a building, but how would I go about that, um, like in South Carolina? How, how would I do that? All right. you, uh, I'm actually I'm gonna do a video on how to how to get a building. Um, I, yeah, I want people to know how. So there are three ways that you can do it. Number one, you can do a capital campaign where you just raise the money for a building that you want to build, buy, or renovate. The other way that you can do it is if a building becomes available in your city, uh, they will put out an RFP like they did for this one, and you fill out the um. You fill out the questionnaire, you just make a proposal, all right? That's what I did with this building. I made a proposal based on uh, the city's plans and goals, and uh, and they chose it. And then after they chose it, they said, well, you don't have to pay us. Uh, we'll, we'll cover it with a grant and give it to you for a dollar. And they did that because I was solving, I was using the building to solve a citywide problem. The other thing that you can do um, is just ask. Meet with your city council, ask them about available buildings, and uh, ask them about available buildings, and then go from there. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. Anything else? I'll um, uh, I'll see if somebody can record the thing while it's happening um if they can record the thing while it's happening then uh y'all will be able to see uh, anybody want to see the behind the scenes yes absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yes. 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 all right i actually uh mark i think if i if i do another if i i might be able to just continue this zoom link um let me see Uh, Y'all can go ahead and ask other questions. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna um, put the phone down in a second. If you had like a tripod coach and just had that phone sitting on it, that would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, coach, here's what I had a question about: is like. When you do, can you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Granny T. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, I was really uh, wanted to ask a question. With my alien um, registration for my uh, nonprofit here in Florida, am I going to have to, like the address that I use, will I use my headquarters address out of St. Louis or will I use my address my local address and do i have to get a virtual office here too you might have to take on that expense you don't have to take on another expense you can use whatever address you want in florida sometimes people use their home address sometimes people uh borrow a desk in somebody else's office and use that mm -hmm. address. but when it comes to local government funds mm -hmm. they, will, they will expect you to be registered in that state uh, as an alien registration. And if you are not, it's going to bite you. Mm -hmm. at okay. So just go ahead okay. and be thinking about it. It doesn't take long. It only takes a day. Yeah. All right. Okay. So if you don't want to incur that cost right now. Just go ahead and be ready that when the time comes, you need to be able to push that button. Okay. So right, y'all Bruce has walked in. Say, hey, Bruce. So I do you what you're saying. I do hey, need Bruce. to have an office okay. set up, hey, or, Bruce. or be sharing an office, correct? Yeah, yeah. You, you okay. Could, if you were in Asheville, you could, you would just, you could just sign up and 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 use my address, my business yeah. address. So That's I like, like, like Regis does. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. I gotta look at that. Watch. Okay. Mm hmm All right. Thank you. Uh huh.
All right, can y'all see? Yeah, we can see. Yeah. So you know cameras that move around when you move around, coach. <laughs> I'm not gonna move around that much. <laughs> but yeah. So they're gonna be here. This is the site visit, and they'll come and, and check this stuff out. Really beautiful. Mm -hmm. What other questions do y'all have? Are they coming? Coach, coach, I have a question. Uh-huh. I um I have an upcoming meeting with the uh, a city council member um where uh for my district where i was getting ready to present to her the organization that's offering the women the uh, mental health wellness sessions at no cost mm -hmm. are there any um can you give me any feedback on particular questions i should ask her i did the research and she sits on the committee uh council committees of finance and audit community and neighborhood development and the arlington housing financial corporation and yes. listening at what you're talking about right now, being able to get a building will, of course, alleviate all that overhead that I have trying to pay for a space for the women to have a safe space to talk. Yeah. And what city is it? Arlington, Texas. Yeah. So the number one question that you should always ask is what problems do they have and how can you help? Um. They're not always going to know how you can help, but they're going to talk about initiatives that they have. Um, when you ask them about the problems that they have, you want to be listening for what you can do to solve their problem. So if they say we have a problem with opioids, we have a problem with teen mothers, we have a problem with youth violence, we have a problem with drunk driving. You want to think, how can you use your thing to solve their problem? You're going to have to um, think quick in order to keep their attention. So um, if they say, well, we have a problem with opioids, then you can say, um, what if we were doing a program that address women, single women, and uh, keeping them off drugs? So then that conversation develops. And you can always follow up with them um, and you should follow up with them. You should definitely make them part of your news, your newsletter and your monthly updates. But the most important question you always want to ask is what problems do they have? What are they working on and how can you help? Now, this is the difference when you're in a group meeting with potential stakeholders and one on one meeting with stakeholders. If you're one on one with stakeholders, you want them to do the talking. And you want to ask them about their problems. When you're in group meetings, you want to have had already researched their problems and you want to tell them about your approaches to their problems. So when you're one on one, the dynamic is get that person talking. When you're in a group, you want to demonstrate that you've done your research and that you have ideas about how to solve the problem. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, it does make sense. Um, she um, has a her own event coming up for the city that she did ref, um, mention to us about being a part of the event. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's coming up in like October and giving space. Um, she also asked about any additional events that we may have coming up. Yeah. Um, just in the email part. So with That's the follow good. with the conversation that we're going to have, uh, what you are saying to me is to make sure that I ask her, how can I also serve what the city has? Yes. Yes. You want them to tell you about the, the city's problems and what they're working on. They're going to ask you. But this is if, if you had a one on one meeting with them and you just told them about what you do, what you do, what you do they're going to automatically think, well, somebody else is doing that. Okay. You want to turn the table. Ask them what their problems are. Ask them what they're working on and offer your support of what they're doing. What they are going to do is then turn around and ask you, and then the doors open. It's always best to be invited. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you. No problem. All right. Well, during the during this meeting, 
um, the, the people are coming. So uh, you all are going to be on mute. You'll be able to hear. Um, and then after they leave, uh, if you have questions, I'll be glad to answer them. But, but uh, I'm, I'm finished kind of with, with the lesson for today, but you're about to see the lesson in action. Stay for as long as you want. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of people that, that say stuff and they don't actually do the thing. Uh, what you all about to see is the thing in action, okay? And, uh, and write down any questions. I'll come back at the end of the meeting and ask, I mean, answer any questions. Coach, I just want to say I appreciate this. It's live and exclusive uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> I'm excited about this. <laughs> All right. No problem. No problem. Thank you, Coach, too, because a lot of people in this space, they are real big gatekeepers and they only give you so much and charge you so much money for it. But you are actually whatever what your cost to us is pennies compared to what you're giving us. So I just want to thank you for this. We're feeling like a real community. I've been telling everybody about it, sharing the link. So I really appreciate you. I really do. No Absolutely. Ditto. Ditto. Thank you. <laughs> we both said that at the same right. time. Ditto, ditto, ditto. Thank you. All right. Um, Brother Clark, my son uh, reached out and asked when we could meet with you and your brother. So uh, if, if Brother Clark is still here, uh, text me afterwards. Hey, Bruce. What's up? Uh, I should they said they're running late, so I will wait a little longer. Who's that? <laughs> Granny T said she like my leather pants. Oh, Lord. All right. Yeah, y'all can come off mute for for right now. Well, Mark, you'll have to take them off mute for now. We'll go back on mute when uh when they get here. Okay, coach. We wasn't gonna say nothing about that little fit you got on, but I'm looking at <laughs> I'm looking at Burberry scarf when you <laughs> Wait, where are you coach, going today? What you doing? Coach <laughs> Coach came in and clean as a whistle. Uh, There's a little so I like clothes now. <laughs> matter of fact, I like jackets in particular. I That's like why we zero right on in on that outfit. I'm like, mm -hmm, okay, give me that scar. Yeah. So, are y'all gonna hook, oh, uh, open that refrigerator and turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's brand new. It's still in the box, but uh, we we gonna have to do something. Uh, but the building's already set up. Uh, this meeting is only going to be like twenty or thirty minutes. Um, and she just texted me to say that they're late. But, uh, yeah, we're going to plug that refrigerator up so we can store drinks in it. Hey, Coach, I have a question while we're waiting. It's Dr. Sherman. Um, yep. On Grant Suite, um, me and my, my team, we went in there and we used one of the letters mm -hmm. that, that you put in the um, the letters to be able to contact City Council. But um, I have her on – I have my – uh, vice president of board on here. She has a question. Let me, let me, Mariah, what was the question you want me to ask, Coach? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. She said that we're getting ready to try to go up for some grants and they're asking for like revenue. So when you don't have a lot of financial statements with revenue, do you suggest that we do like a budget forecast? They, they're actually going to ask for both. They're going to ask for your revenue from last year. So just give them whatever is the true and honest. If it is zero, then it's zero. Um, and for the upcoming year, you're given the projection of what you plan to, to spend for next year. When people, if you did anything, like if your nonprofit was open last year and you did receive donations by objects, 
those objects have a dollar value. Put that in your budget. If you have been open for a year and people have volunteered with you, that volunteer time has a dollar value. That's mm. a kind. Put that in your budget. So even if you haven't received a bunch of cold hard cash, you probably have received about $20,000 worth of stuff and time in your organization. Things that money should have paid for if it were not for people donating their time, you would have had to pay them. If it were not for people donating objects and toys, et cetera, you would have had to spend money for it. So I use Tanya Watkins, for example. She did the Christmas in July and they were able to give gifts to hundreds of people in Inglewood, Chicago, right? So those, those items that were donated, she might not have counted the dollar value, but when Walmart donated, when Target donated, when Humana donated, when they gave the cell phones to the people and the one month of free service, the barber that donated their time, all that stuff had dollar value that sometimes people don't count. So take some time and count up the things that you received and the dollar value that's in, that's included. If you have zero objects, zero volunteer, zero, 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 then so be it. Your previous year is zero. Don't be bashful about it. Just let them know we're just now starting. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. I'm glad you said that too, Coach, because sometimes I don't put a value on the things that I've already done because I'm like, oh, well, that's too, it's little. Um, but for the past three years going on four, I've always had like an end of the year um, holiday giveaway for single mothers where I partner with Tours for Tots and, you know, other, you know, and I just, I don't know why I never really just considered that. But from here on out, I definitely will start to, you know, incorporate that because it is something, it's significant. It is. It is significant and it counts. Um, Matter of fact, I'm glad you mentioned that. Somebody asked a question about Lego. They wanted uh, donations from Lego. So I researched and found out Lego does not give to the United States. Um, oh. They're based in Denmark, and they only give to Denmark and about six other countries. Um, but they don't, they don't make donations to the United States. I don't know why. I think that's kind of mean, but so be it. They can do what they want to do. Um, I even looked to see, like, they, they have grants and they have sponsorships. And uh, for their sponsorship, they say we only give to Denmark. <laughs> so they, they, they're real specific. Yeah, I had asked that um, coach for my Christmas in July. Mm -hmm. But you might want to check Toys for Tots. Of course, you can also check um, Chuck Goods 360 uh, to see what they can, what they have available. And then you can ask a funding source to fund that. For example, if you wanted a Walmart truck from Goods 360, the Walmart truck might cost $2,000. So then you go to the foundation, you say, if you give me $2,000, I can get the truck from Walmart. Make sense? Yes. Matter of fact, I might do a, um, I might do a, we might need to do a truck. Yeah, remember the what were we? When did we call that thing? The big gear. I'm gonna give you a number. You know what? I'm gonna look and see. Um. So, Coach, can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. Is that out there? No, it's. Uh, granny tea. Oh, hey, granny tea. <laughs> yeah, I'm just talking softly. I'm in, the, uh, in here trying to get my Florida driver's license, man. But anyway, um, I have a question because I got a meeting with um, the, what is she? She's the commissioner of the city of Miramar. She wants me to sit, wants to, want me to come in and talk. She wants me to sit on a senior advisory uh, board uh -huh. and I was wondering how do you leverage those is it just the same as normal just like you know networking or when you sit on those boards is I've heard you talk about it but I mean what, what what's kind of how do you leverage that how do you use that to your advantage as a non-profit 
Yeah, when you when you sit on those boards, what you want to do is listen for information about where the money is moving. So mm -hmm. y'all saw like I just uh, while we were looking at the tourism boards, we saw the five million going to neighborhoods. Now mm -hmm. I just found that out, but that's actually old news. Somebody was on the committee and knew about that. Um, and when you when you're on the committee, you know about stuff before it hits the public. Mm -hmm. Now, you can ask them, you know, how can this benefit my neighborhood? Okay. That's that's okay. what you want to do. You do not want to reference your nonprofit in particular. You want to okay. reference how does this, how can this benefit the neighborhood? How can this benefit the people? What uh, what amount of money? What are going to be the requirements? And then after you find out all that information, then... You want to, um, after you find out that information, mm -hmm. then you want to take action. Okay. And it's not a, a, what you call it, a conflict of interest. Is that correct? I mean, because you have a nonprofit, now you're on, a, you know, the committee or the board. Does that create yeah, a conflict? It's, <laughs> it's not a conflict um, until or unless they say it's a conflict. Okay. So the, the, the issue... Yeah is that it's not going to benefit you personally. It's not it's not like you're going to put the money in your pocket, your pocket. You actually just want the thing so that you can help people and not have to keep coming out of your pocket. All right. So, it's not a conflict of interest. I'm actually on a board that has a grant available right now. And um and so they they said it's not a conflict of interest. All we have to do is to disclose. We just have to tell them that I'm on the committee and then I have to recuse myself. So I'm not evaluating myself. Uh, anybody in Indiana area? Well, part of Indiana. Um, anywhere in Indiana or close to Indiana. Walmart has a truck available for $500. Oh, that's me. Oh, okay. Let me let me show you real quick. Did you register with Good360? Absolutely. I'm going to show you. You better go on and, and get it. You have to be truckload certified. So um, call them in, and make sure that, you're, that you are truckload certified. And if you're not, then you want to get truckload certified. How do you get truckload certified? Um, you fill out the application. They're going to require that you have a warehouse. Um, they're going to ask for a lease. Um, you have to be able to store the thing. They have 18 pallets. This thing is worth $18,000 worth of stuff. And you just pay $500. Do you all see my screen? Oh, man. So we paying five hundred or seventeen hundred. Uh, five hundred if you pick it up. Okay. If they deliver it, you pay the five hundred plus the cost of shipping. Okay. Hey, coach, no, 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 can no, no, you no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. what good three sixty is? Oh, oh, yeah. This is where you get uh loads of stuff for super cheap. Good, good three sixty is. Yes. Okay. So uh, go there and register your nonprofit. Uh, it's free to register. All right. Hold on, Tanya. I think I, I gave you bad information. The administrative fee, uh, they say $1,700, but this looks like a breakdown. So just call them and ask which one it is. Because it looks like they have an option. Either you pick it up and pay $500, or if they deliver it, it's $500 plus shipping costs. Is call them and ask. Tell them you know you do Christmas in July, and you need the truck for the uh, the giveaway. So, Coach, I have a oh, question. No, about that. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just was gonna ask, Coach. Even though that that truck is located in Indiana, they saying that they ship, but would they ship in any other, you know what I'm saying, city or state? They will. You just have to pay the shipping costs. 
Okay, so, got it. When you, so Coach, when I was you, saying I, about they have like it's some um, patio furniture, outdoor furniture. Is that what it's yeah, all in that truck? Like, you can you always call and ask them. It looks like they. I mean, what would you, yeah. what would you do without virtual? <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, well, that. Uh, call them in and see what's on that shipment. Looks like that shipment is just patio furniture. So you can get a truck from anywhere, and they have trucks from Walmart. Um, trucks from Amazon, trucks from Ferguson, truck from Granger. So it doesn't really matter. So you have to have like a warehouse or could you have a storage that's big enough? Like how does that you, work? A, a storage that's big enough. Yes. So you have to be truck, what they call truckload certified. And in order to get truckload certified, you have to tell them how big your storage space is. And then when you apply for a truck, then they'll qualify you based on your storage space. This, for example, is uh, this truck has $257,000 worth of stuff in it. Um, the fee is $2,600. Toys and crafts and variety. Okay, That's a lot. Yeah. So register for Goods Three Hundred and Sixty, and then go see. So, Coach, they don't tell you what is in these trucks. Uh, sometimes they have uh, a manifest with all the items, and sometimes they don't. So, if you sign up for them, because go Coach told us about this last year. Um, if you sign up for them, I just got an email from them this morning, and they were showing me like all kind of different Nike shoes that they had. Uh, yeah, all the sizes. Rashida be ordering all the Nikes. Well, that's nice give giveaways for the community. I mean, if your organization had some event going, they can give those away because they're brand new. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. And when you when you go to the event, I mean, when you do the event, make sure you let your public officials know, your donors know, et cetera. You can't sell this stuff. You have to give it away. But this is how you um, this is how you leverage it. You demonstrate that you're giving back to the community. OK. OK, coach, my mouth is wide open because I did not know about this. Uh, this good 360. Um, and so I'm looking at this. I held an event that was called retail therapy. It was a fundraiser for where the women, they paid like a price, like it was like a $40 ticket price to get in. But once they got in, everything was free to the community because things had been donated. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was called retail therapy to help raise money for the, for the, um, for the women. But with this right here, if you get approved for this, you could potentially get truckloads of things that I could give away to the and incorporate it within my fundraiser. You so you cannot use these as part of a fundraiser. OK, has to be a pure giveaway. So no admission fee to get in. Uh -huh. Collect the money at the thing. However, what you can do is have a totally pure giveaway and let people register by giving your give their emails, invite potential funding sources to come. You don't ask them for money at the event. You follow up and ask them for money. Understood. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'll think that All out. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So if um, and I know that a, a lot of a lot of church groups um are around. What if instead of the, the whole church convention or the whole vacation Bible school, what if one day was just a giveaway? So the so under the program that I have, because you you taught me a while back that it wasn't just the women needed more than you know, like the counseling. If they're there, if they're there doing their mental health wellness, that they also need food. They also need, cause these are the things that they are, that's upsetting them in life, life variables and it's causing the depression. So if I just have a, 
a, a, a giveaway of things and invite like the city councils, the people to come and say, we're, these are the things that we're giving away just pure fun to the community That's exactly what you want under to do. the, uh, because you said to develop three different types of programs. Mm -hmm. um, That's exactly what you want to do. Okay. And then later on, I mean, like immediately after, like the next day, send them an email and say, thank you so much for coming, coming by um, and participating in our giveaway. And you're sending this email to funding sources. Would you like to help us um, ensure that we'll be able to do this again next year? Make a donation. Or um, do you have any funding sources that will help us make sure that we can do it again next year? Gotcha. If the truckload was worth a hundred thousand dollars, then you just gave away a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. It doesn't matter that you didn't spend the hundred thousand. Understood. All right. All right. So, uh, any other, last question? Uh, the people they said that they're almost here, and so y'all are going to go on mute for. A uh, few minutes while I talk to them. But uh, what's the last question? All right. Yeah. And do y'all do y'all talk to each other? Y'all should meet each other, at least in the chat. Exchange information, tell each other about what each other are doing. You never know what partnerships you can create. All right. You know the question before I go get ready for these folks. It's only in the middle. Yes, right there. Yeah, really warm. Yeah. Alright, so of course, um, well, welcome to Black Wall Street, we all know the history of the building. And these are the really big fans. Uh, and we're glad that the heater works, but of course it works in the middle. So if you're off to the side, you don't feel as much warmth. Uh, the project that we are seeking funding for is requesting two things. One of those is the HVAC system. Um, and we plan to work with Rise Construction. Rise Construction, they're locally owned uh, construction, and they will do, they will GC the whole thing for us. Um, they'll just handle everything from beginning to end. And because of y'all see the wall here, it's really a, a half wall, it's just there, kind of a fake wall. Um, but we initially thought, well, we could just buy mini slips. Um, but when we asked the truck, when we asked the um the, the HVAC company to price mini slips for us, they said that no matter how many mini slips we put in this room, it would not suffice. Because that, because it's actually trying to take care of the whole village. Um, so they said we need to find uh, a company that would do HVAC, commercial HVAC for the whole building. And then the other issue is that we're in a floodplain. So they can't do anything on the ground. Uh, so they said whatever company did need to be a commercial company uh, and they had to be able to lift it off the ground and rise and figure out how they could do it in the back. Um, lift it off the ground and have a system that will heat or cool the whole thing. Um, they would not have to remove any of this. They would just add duct work and paint it black so it fits in. Uh, so it doesn't take away from the aesthetic that we that we have here. 
All right. Um, this, now, of course, this is the whole room. You all can walk around, uh, but you'll notice that the other parts of the building are not heated or cooled. Uh, so that's because this is this is the heating and the fans are the cool. So during the winter time, uh, it's very rigid on the side of the building. Uh, and during the summertime, it should warm all the way around. Um, I spoke with Chip Powell, who was one of the contractors, the architect that worked on the building, uh, designed and created. And uh, he said, when I asked him, the chip is talking here. Um, he said, well, you're supposed to be able to open the top part of the window and turn on the fan, and it's not so because of how air moves, it doesn't blow your paper, but it cools the building down. And it does make it cooler, but it's still not comfortable. And as an event space, we're competing with other, other places that are 100% heated and cool. Uh, and we want to be able to do that. Uh, hotels, um, have reached out to us to ask if we could be a place that when people cannot afford their their spot or their spot to be, then this is the better size. Uh, we're like, yeah, we would love to. Um, the different people come in, you know, ask about the day back. We have to say they're working on it. Um, we just had a walkthrough, and this person did uh, pay their deposit, and they're still going to move through it, but they're going to celebrate some life. And they asked if we could move everything out. Now, gratefully, we paid for the sort of thing, so we could move everything out. But when they asked about temperature control, we had to address this. Um, it, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by it, but it is like these are the rules of the house. You know what I mean? This is just how we manage. And it would be great if we didn't have to do that if we actually had a track system. I mean, as a city on property, I think it, it might be improved. It might be the final touch on this building. All right. Um, the other thing that we, that the other part of the project is the awning outside, or it's it's not actually an awning. It's, uh, it's uh, I have some official words right here, but it's posts. I was about to say stick, but they're not a bigger sticks. <laughs> there are posts, um, and then there's a tin roof that matches this. Um, that will go out here on the grade um, on the porch. So they would pull up uh, parts of the porch uh, that will allow space for the pilings and then the, uh, the sticks, the posts. And then they would have a roof on it that matches this roof so that they would be shaded. And the porch would live on a covered porch. That's about 1,300 uh, square feet for the porch space. That would then be covered, which makes it an inside and outside use space. So when we do events, or anybody does events, the porch can actually become stage. Beyond this wall, are there restrooms? Restrooms. Beyond this wall is restrooms. Um, there's no porch on that side of the building. So the porch starts here and I wraps around top like a pillow. So this footprint of this room is stays. Yes, yes. Um, when we do when when we do events that are um, it, 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 the building is pretty easy to fill up, but when we have events that are that are full, we open the garage. Uh, people put chairs out there. Uh, now, of course, that's weather permitted. If we have tents, I mean, not we have used tents before. If we have porch, we wouldn't have to use tents. We also have some outside space heaters uh, that we use at times, but that, that can't do anything for mist or rain. But if we had uh, the, the coverage, then it would. The only with the wall way around? Yes, it goes around that much. Is this where Brian Fest is held? Uh, it has been held here for years, uh, but this year it won't be here. Um, because of the street closures from all the other construction, the different local businesses asked us not to do another street closure last year, about, about 9,000 people. So, uh, any tech agreed to let us do it there so we don't have any street closure, it's so many clothes. Um, and we have Ferris wheels and roller coasters. So, uh, we got a good solid ground. <laughs> Maybe another crown. 
Yeah. So like, make sure y'all come to the grind fest and uh, y'all can actually order your grind fest t-shirt ahead of time too. Yeah, I think this is outside the scope of your project, but I was wondering if you all know, figured out a solution for your, your storage that was different than what you're doing here with these. I know when we had the Black Buffalo Heritage Trail event, we just thought, oh, it, it would be so much more spacious to be. See, well, we were all in. But if all those windows weren't were were constructed, the sun yeah. wasn't piled up back there. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we actually had to we just purchased the story again. Oh, that's great. Um, and so we are uh, that that's that's our solution right now. Yeah. Uh, when we first moved in, we had asked about getting an outside storage container. Um, that was a no go. And we got you know deal with all the. The neighborhood things, and it's not a lot of outside space anyway. So, us, you know, we appreciate having the building, so we go to the store with this by store. Yeah. Any other questions? There, there's one thing that's not in there, there's one small detail that's not in the request. Um, I don't know if it changes, so if you all can let me know. Um, but y'all, there are a lot of windows in here. They get a lot of shit lighting, right? However, when we had meetings during the day, the light would come to flare. And we we tried tinting. Um, but it doesn't really do much. So um, <laughs> we were thinking, we were thinking to get curtains, curtains that could be drawn. Um uh, they, they would have to be, you know, heavy, nice enough and heavy enough to fit in. Kind of like blue gear curtains. Um, that you know, I was in a, I was in a space um, in West Asheville some years ago, and it was super bright outside, and they were recording inside, and they just pulled the curtains and blacked out. So is that something you want in the ads? So these shades don't really come with the house. I didn't hear any detail on the top of it. Well, these additions. Oh, yeah. When we hit the vision, I think we will come to the stream in the place. So, initially, we're competitive. Um, we had, we did at least, at least two requests a day. Um, and and when people come in, they like the space, but then they're like, well, what about you? <laughs> we get we get requests for weddings and reception, um, the the repast after funerals, and the temperature of all these things. Right. Uh, people don't complain about the you know the outside, and I think they don't complain about it because they haven't seen it. But I've seen what can be done when we have a cover porch. Um, and so that's why I put it there. That's, that's a visionary element, but the HVAC is um, just a touch of necessary to me. Where are your offices? <laughs> Y'all work from home, right? We work from home. We work from home, and uh, yeah, of course, uh, I, I built some, uh, some makeshift offices that I talked about. Uh, so okay, that's yeah. what I thought would be our office. Okay. okay. But uh, this is it. Uh, we maximize it as, as an event space. Uh, and when we initially, um, when we initially proposed use the other space, we initially proposed that it could be similar to a gift shop, a store that was full of stuff being made from local uh, black and brown makers. Uh, the problem with that is that our makers all the time. Uh, and you know, and again, it's better with some problems. Uh, it was a safety thing, but since we did have such valuable thing in here, it wasn't such a nuisance, it's just not good. Um, uh, but we realized we can't we, we can't have things in here all the time. So you mean they're breaking in here? Yes. Yeah, they they were climbing in through one of the windows or they were coming in because during the day, this these are public restaurants, so They'll come in during the day and they just hide back there until the night time closes. And, and then they're, they're kind of in there. We'll become like camping out 
And that's that not good as well. The less things we can have in here, maybe the less attractive it is. So your parking is that back here too, or is that just a it's, it's only here, it's here and there. And, and what's the capacity here with the parking spaces right now? Um uh, well it's, it's like a parking. Our dedicated oh okay. Yes, we, we have four dedicated spaces. Um, but that part is public parking. Oh right. Okay. So when you have a meeting event people know. That's not the same issue. It is. Okay. We have to uh, we have to try to come in for it and, and make sure that it's clear. And most of the time it's okay. There have been times that it has been okay. Uh, there have been uh, the body foods in the in the bathrooms, things that are very untidy. Uh, people uh, sleeping in there, laying in there. Um, you know, we haven't had any problem with people refuse to leave. Uh, but it's definitely a problem. I mean, you have to not quick clean before folks come in, et cetera. Um, it's kind of hard for the court to talk to the city council about it. Uh, they make some adjustments, uh, but it is it's a thing. It's, it's, why, why does, I guess, why does it stay public? You mean, why does it stay public? Why does it stay public? The last response uh, from the city is that it has been public. Um, and according to our lease, it will be public. The uh, my reports, oh, I can't go with that. My next step is to ask the council if they can change that part of the lease. So, for, and for transparency for this room, um, so this building and this restaurant were part of the seven million dollars, so one plus dollar TPDF investment in regards to district landscaping greenways. And so this is a city owned building that they are leasing. And so if these are city public restrooms, then they should be cleaning and managing them and making sure that those doors are painted appropriately and for that to lock. Like I just want to check, did a little check. I'm curious that way. Um, and so I would I would put that as a try. And you know, in, in discussion with them and in partnership to say these are if these are publicly owned restrooms, then you should you city should be responsible for maintaining them and for their safety. So yeah, yeah, once so, that details and they're they're asking you know, some distance was different three weeks ago. Um they said that they will clean them up today at this point. Um and that they have to stay public. One of the the problems is that um they will just put a sign that says restaurant is out of order or restaurant is closed. They can do that, and we can't do that. It's just kind of, kind of weird. Uh, they say it's out of order, which means nobody can use it. And then if we, when we have our paid events, then now our customers cannot use it, which is a problem. Uh, they put that sign up just to stop the use of it, or yes. it really is out of order? <laughs> it, it is out of order, but out of order because they haven't cleaned uh -huh. or they haven't fixed it. So the thing that created the problem is the the, the nuisance behavior. They could have fixed it, but they didn't. And instead of fixing it, they put a sign. My solution is, well, just let us control it. You know, um, because if you put that sign, you're not going to keep them out. You're keeping our paying customers out. And, and it's also embarrassing. I mean, when you go in to pay for the space, uh, and, and our fee is $500 for half a day, $1,000 for eight hours. Um, you go in to pay for the space, one of the first things you do is check the bathroom. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, have you all considered increasing your fees once you get the HVAC in? Yes. Yes, yes. Um, we, we knew that we were new on the block. We knew we had to build trust. Um, we had to kind of get in. With the event planners and and, uh, and then like the online searches for the people that start seeing us and then uh, repeat customers. Um, but I think that we, I know that we will increase our the the something that's uh, that's more market appropriate. Do you include things like tables and chairs and that sort of thing? Uh, right now it does, and that's I mean Uber's uh, business model was to. Um, undercut everything so they can get in, 
and then build customers, and then they increase their price incrementally. Uh, so right now, outdoor fees include everything. The only thing that people pay extra for is uh, is clean. If they help us to clean, uh, then they'll pay an extra fee. After that, yes. They can bring their food and their beverage. Uh, we do recommend um, local by our leaders, uh, you know, caterers or providers, DJs, everything we provide them. That is a lot of times they'll use it, they ask us anyway. Uh, I I know people pick the building because it's beautiful, uh, but I think that people also pick it because of what it means. Um, and and lots of, of, of black organizations and um, and by our leaders and community members use it. Uh, in ways that I say, look, I, I've been here since 1998. I haven't seen this building that way before for well, the well, well, year. But uh, <laughs> yeah. well, we've yeah. seen a lot of retirement parties, uh, graduation parties, um, um, high school reunions for the season of the league, et cetera, uh, 50 year marriages, things like that. It's an appropriate side for a family that needs a place to kind of do something. And they'll make a huge space on a huge budget and something over. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah. 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 When it comes up before City Council, uh, if any of you are citizens and have a say, you can definitely uh, chip in and let them know look favorably upon us. But I, I do think that uh, that we should have more control over the bathroom so that we can pass. I really do. Uh, right, well, if there are any more questions, when you, when you go out, um, if, if you could just go out this way so you can see that how the how the thing will, will work. And I printed out some pictures of uh, what a rise construction gave us uh, just to show what it would look like. So you'll see, but these are actually a darker wood uh, with a tin roof. Imagine this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Yeah. Well, yes, it's for you. 
You got here right on time. All right. Where? You in my mouth. You went in there? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you in there? Oh, Jesus. I oh, that's a shame. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hey, Lord, it's 21 of y'all still in here. All right. So, Mark, take them off of mute and uh, we can answer questions. Um, I'll answer all of your questions and then I've got to run. Actually, I got to get on the road. All right. Any questions? So, Coach, were they a collaborative group who, and and when will you know whether or not they have decided, yes, that they're going to fund all of the things that you've asked them for? They um They are a committee. And um, that's actually a type of committee that you want to be on. Um, so they are part of a committee made up of different people from different parts of the community, different businesses and organizations. Oh, so they're a committee from different different businesses in the community. Yes, and they make up a committee of this board. So grants have committees, like a grant review committee, and that's what they are for this. Uh, uh, for your for your. Nonprofit, they're the committee for your nonprofit. To, uh, they are a grant review committee for the funding source, oh, the Tourism okay. Development Authority. Okay. They are the grant review committee for the Tourism Development Authority. Oh, okay. So, what was the thing about? Because I was, it was kind of going in and out. But what was the thing about the public restroom? Like, because that seemed like that was a, a major issue. Yeah, the city gave us this building. Um, as a $1 lease. And part of the agreement was that the restrooms will be open for the public. And so they were asking how that was going. The Tourism Development Authority, also, you may have heard the lady say that they have invested $7 million in this building. Wow. Oh my goodness. I thought I heard that, but I was like, I don't know if they talking yeah, about yeah. this building or, or a different no, building. They're, they're talking about this building. <laughs> So this building used to be, this building was built in 1921 and it was donated from the gas company at that time. So what they did, they moved the building, lifted it up on rafters and then preserved it. Uh, wow. And that took $7 million. <laughs> yep, and I, I can attest to that. I'm from that neighborhood and I lived right up the street. Yeah. All right. And uh, we'll, I think we'll have our decision in May, May or June. Okay. Thanks. That's that. awesome. It's awesome. Congratulations. You was able to answer the questions like when they came at you, you was able to spit out. Yeah, the they was coming at you. I was and, like, oh, Jesus. And you were prepared. <laughs> and then you had the, the, the information some information to give them afterwards, which I thought was very nice. That was very, well, you are experiencing with them too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the information that I have for them is information that I already emailed them, but it's good to have. They looked at it as if it was their first time seeing it. 
it was information that I already gave them. People like to see pictures and they like to see budgets. So I just had the contractor print out the budget to give me the budget and the picture rendition of what it would look like at the end. But I've already emailed it to them. It was part of my application. All right. So you see, even even if you know, the, the writing is good because I'm, I'm a writer. Um, and in fact, a lady that used to work for that agency is helping me with this grant. But even um, even if I was a bad writer. It would still be a good proposal because it's not as much about the writing as it is about the full experience. I'm talking to him about how we're solving a citywide problem. And you want to make sure that they feel it, okay? So y'all, um, we've been together all afternoon. I did not mean to take up y'all's day like this, but I thought it was a great time to teach a lesson and then uh, kind of have that field trip experience in real time so y'all can see it in action, okay? Thank you. I appreciate it so much, man. I appreciate it. All right, y'all. Well, y'all take care, and, and I'll see y'all. Thanks, Cole. Thank Safe travel. Have a good day. Thank okay. you, Cole. Right. Safe travel. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Coach. Safe travels.